Okay guys, it's time to take another look at MX Linux, MX Linux 17, the official release. So we finally are out of beta. I did review the beta of MX 17, uh, I don't know, about a month ago, and I was really impressed. Matter of fact, I'm considering possibly putting MX Linux on my main production machine here that I'm recording this video on. Maybe. I'm, I'm still you know, trying to decide between half a dozen or so uh, Linux distributions that I'm thinking about putting on this machine. But anyway, I was really impressed with the beta version of MX Linux 17. So let's take a look at the official release. I'm going to install it inside VirtualBox. I'm going to quickly just go through the install. I, the install process really shouldn't have changed between the beta a month ago and uh, the release. Alright, and we load into the live desktop environment. We have our little greeter here. I'm going to close this for now. And I'm going to click the installer. All right, I'm going to very quickly run through the installer. All right, I'm going to give it the entire 15 gig disk. Just going to click next. OK to format and use the entire disk, yes. All right, select boot method. Install Grub for MX Linux and Windows. Install on the master boot record root. Yeah, I'm going to install on the master boot record next. OK to install Grub Bootloader at SDA, yes. All right, computer network name. It's chosen MX1. I'm going to leave all the defaults here. I'm just going to click next. All right, localization. US is correct. US English for locale is correct. Uh, use clock uses local. You know what? I'll take that on. Time zone is not correct. I need America slash. Uh, where's Chicago in the list? That's central time zone. All right, I'm going to click next. All right, we need to create our user account. I'm going to call the username MX Linux. We need to give that user a password. Root password. And we need to type it twice to confirm it. All right, do we want to encrypt our home folder? No, I'm not going to do that here on this virtual machine auto login. I never tick that on. I'm just going to click next. All right, we click finish. All right. We have to reboot. I'll be right back. Okay, our freshly installed MX Linux 17, codename Horizon, uh, booted up, no problem. We got to this very attractive login manager screen very fast. Type in my password. And loading the MX Linux uh, XFCE desktop environment. Their neat little customized XFCE panel here on the left side of the screen. Very reminiscent of Unity or uh, the dash to dock feature in the GNOME shell. All right, we have the MX17 greeter here, which contains links to their user manual, wiki, tools, tweaks, forums, videos, how to contribute to the project, and popular apps. We can tick this off to where it no longer shows uh, this default, this dialog at startup. Let's go over some of the features here in MX Linux 17. The kernel, I'm using the 64-bit uh, edition of MX Linux here. They're running 4.13.0 for the kernel. Uh, their foundation, you know, what they build this distro on, is based on Debian Stable 9.3. That's Debian Stretch. It's augmented by ongoing backports and additions. They also use some uh, antics repos, I believe. Uh, MX Linux is a, a collaborative effort, effort between uh, some of the antics community and the old Meepus community for those of you that remember the old Meepus Linux distro. Alright, going through the menu here. If you watched my review of MX Linux 17's beta about a month ago, should all still all be the same programs here in the menus. I'm just going to highlight a few uh, of the programs I think deserve some special attention. Uh, for example, our default browser here on the launcher is of course Firefox. And this is Firefox Quantum. This is 57.0.2. This is the 64-bit version of Firefox Quantum, which is a, a major upgrade for Firefox that happened in, in recent weeks. Really love the, the new Firefox. All right, for media player, let me go to multimedia here in the menu. VLC, best multimedia player available on Linux or probably on Windows. Yeah, VLC is definitely available on Windows. I haven't run Windows in many many years, but um, 
VLC 2.2.7 Umbrella. It's the current version of VLC. All right. For our multimedia player, let's see. Go back to multimedia. Our audio player is Clementine. I love Clementine. Fantastic music player. Let's see what version of Clementine we're on. Clementine version 1.3.1. .1. Clementine is an awesome audio player. All right, let me go back to the menu under system. We have some backup stuff. We have lucky backup. Let me type in my root password. I am not that familiar with lucky backup. It's been around for a while. I've seen it in a number of uh, distros. Basically, this is used, you know, to back up your system. Lucky backup is a, is a good way, uh, you know, to make a backup file. But uh, I think it uses rsync. Now I think it's a graphical user interface for the rsync uh, terminal command. Uh, it also has the option to run here, begin the execution of all included tasks, but you can also tick on this box here and do a dry run of uh, whatever, however you set up the backup to run. You know that way you can test it out before running it, just in case you're worried about breaking your system. So lucky backup, pretty cool tool. Our file manager is the standard file manager in the XFC desktop environment. This is Thunar, Thunar 1.6.12. Fantastic, lightweight, minimal file manager. Our terminal is the XFCE terminal, standard terminal that comes in the XFCE desktop environment. Our task manager, let's see how we're doing on memory and CPU usage here. All right, we are using about five, seven, three percent, a single digit percentage of CPU usage. And that's after I just opened a ton of programs, you know, and closed them, but, you know, if this may be a little higher than it would normally be running. Memory, it's only using seven percent of memory. That's good. I gave this uh, virtual machine six gigs of memory. It's only using seven percent of it. Uh, that's pretty decent there. On the desktop here, we still have our Conky system monitor that auto starts, you know, so pretty cool, lightweight, minimal system monitor that's always on your desktop. It shows you the date, the time, um, it also shows you some hard disk space, the amount of disk that's been used, the amount that's free, also memory being used out of the total, and CPU percentage. All right, right click on the desktop, we go to desktop settings, and uh, I covered this in my previous review, but very nice selection of wallpapers here installed by default in MX Linux 17. Uh, pretty cool stuff here. I'm going to leave the default one ticked on for now. The panel, of course, your panel is on the left side, and you have this left hand panel. It's almost dock like, though, with all the quick launchers. Uh, it's kind of strange how they have it set up, though, because most people would probably put the main menu launcher at the top. That's where you would expect that, not at the very bottom, and then all the quick launchers, you know, under that at the top. But they have it almost exactly reversed. You have the bottom start menu here, then you have your quick launchers, and then at the very top you have your uh, clock here. Uh, I wonder why they have it set up that way instead of the way I think most users would want it. I don't know. Me, I probably wouldn't use this panel on the left side of my screen on my machine. That's just my own personal preference. I would move it and it does have the option to move and let's see if I can figure out how we move this panel here. Well, That's not how you move the panel. I think that's how you move whatever little widget is in this bar. This I think at our taskbar or application taskbar. So uh, when I right click instead of move I need to go to the panel menu here. Panel preferences. That must be it and we have display, we have appearance, items. Okay, here's where all your widgets live on the panel here. So you can add and remove some of these widgets. So you can actually rearrange this however you want it. That, that's really cool. All right, back to the uh, panel display tab here. Mode, we have desk bar. I guess this is the default mode, desk bar. If I go and choose horizontal, okay, it puts the bar at the top of the page, but still everything is in reverse order from where you would expect it. All right, then we have the vertical option which puts it back over here again. So vertical and desk bar appear to be very similar. All right, so if I leave this at the top of the page, I wanna move this menu. Let me click move, see if I can get that 
yeah, in a more normal spot where I would expect that to be. And I'm going to move the clock over here. Well, if I can move the clock past our workspace uh, switcher here. Let's move the workspace switcher over here. See if we can move all of this too over here. Uh, it moves one launcher at a time. Uh, that's painstakingly slow. Well, actually, there's only two launchers to move because this is the sys tray. I'm going to leave all of this here. Uh, still has Clementine open from where I opened it earlier. Let me quit that. All right, I really want to move that panel to the bottom of the screen. So I think I need to go to Panel Preferences again. And it's got Lock Panel ticked on here. We need to tick that off so we can, you know, move things around. And then I think I, I can, yeah, now we can move that around to wherever we want to. All right. Yeah, I like that. Now, that's more of what I expect from a, you know, XFCE. This is pretty cool. Since this was released, you know, a, a day or two ago, let me go ahead and run an update. Let's check out the graphical uh, package manager. They should be using the Synaptic package manager. A lot of Debian based systems include the Synaptic package manager. A really fantastic graphical way of installing and removing software or updating or upgrading your system. So we need to click the reload button here and it is going to update the repos here. All right, we're going to click mark all upgrades. All right, and it shows you the files that it will upgrade. We're going to click mark them. Then hit the apply button here. Again, we can look at the full list of things to be upgraded. It's only about 7 packages that need to be upgraded. I'm going to hit apply. And that's it. And it's running the update. That is basically the exact same commands you would have used in a terminal for those that would like to do this inside a terminal. That would be uh, sudo apt update and then you need to run sudo apt upgrade and that's it. But basically it runs those exact same commands here. It's just you click buttons in a graphical you know, user interface rather than having to fool with the command line. I know a lot of guys, a lot of you guys out there just hate the terminal. Anyway, MX Linux. I love the MX uh, 17 beta I tried about a month ago. Uh, so much so, again, I'm considering possibly putting MX Linux on my main workstation. I'm still trying to work out exactly what I want on this machine. But M MX Linux is a strong contender, and this is the official release. It, the beta was just as solid, really. Uh, no improvements from what I can tell running inside this virtual machine, anyway. MX Linux A++. Check it out, guys. Peace.